There is one animal in Africa that was once said to kill out of malice, to kill for pure sport, a savage, relentless predator. Many believe it is the most aggressive animal in the world, braver than a lion, more vicious than a hyena. That the honey badger may, in fact, be the meanest animal alive. The honey badger, sometimes called the ratel, has an aura of physical power and determination. Its striking coloring acts as a warning to stay clear. The badger is a daring raider, willing to take unbelievable risks. Bees sometimes build their hives in cavities under rocks where they feel safe from predators. As their name suggests, badgers are partial to honey and are relentless in their efforts to get it. The badger's commando-like raid is filled with danger. These are African bees, known killers with a reputation of stinging animals and humans to death. The badger shows no fear of the bees, even though it has to go deep into the hive to get the honey. Some say it tranquilizes the bees by spraying them with its scent, but there's no real proof of this. The thought of being inside the hive is enough to make anyone's hair stand on end. In the Tsavo National Park in Kenya, it has always been assumed that badgers are nocturnal and hard to find. On the odd occasion when you do catch a glimpse of them, they'll probably be emerging from their sleeping places as the sun is going down. Often there is a pale chanting goshawk nearby, too often to be a coincidence. Badgers can travel four and a half miles in a night and sleep in a different place every day. They often dig their own burrows, but will use holes in termite mounds or hollow trees. This is a young badger. Juveniles are often easier to observe than more wary adults. From watching this young badger, a different side to its character emerges. Somehow, it doesn't fit the description of a fearless, savage killer. Honey badgers are highly efficient four-legged digging machines, and they are smart. The young female detects a mouse or maybe a lizard.
Whatever it is, the prey is clever enough to keep moving backwards and forwards, but the badger anticipates the moves and doubles back. Her attention is distracted by an old ball joint from an elephant's leg bone. All badgers are fascinated by round objects of this size. A few days after rain, millions of these beetles dig their way out of their brood balls in underground chambers and emerge into the night. The beetles go in search of dung, which they find on the surface. This is a very dangerous time for a beetle. The coming of rain is the time when beetles and badgers replenish fat reserves. Unfortunately for the beetles, they are a big part of a badger's diet. There is one other insect which badgers know will bring a high reward, but the risks are equally high. On occasions, bees use old fallen trees for their hives. And a few weeks after the rains have begun, combs are heavy with honey, eggs, and larvae. Whereas badgers find beetles by smell and skillful digging, this one will have to resort to daring and determination to achieve its goal. Getting into a hollow log is not that hard. What's waiting inside is the problem. To face thousands of angry bees trapped in such a confined space would be suicidal even for a badger. But the honey badger is different from other animals. Bees cannot hear sounds. However, they feel the slightest vibrations and sense the badger as she clears out the hollow log to give herself room to move backwards fast. The badger is in a lot of pain. The bees are now stinging the most sensitive parts of the body. Again, the badger is driven off without getting more than a mouthful. This time, a slower approach and a small reward. But she's getting stung all the time, and every one contains a drop of deadly poison. seems she's beaten. The damage to the combs is not drastic. Repairs will be made. The swarm will continue to grow.
Then, an hour later, the badger is back. The bees have regrouped around the damaged combs, presenting a formidable defense against another attack. The badger must still feel the effects of the stings she received from the first assault, but with mounting frustration and rage, she plunges back in. The taste of honey is sweet. There's no question now of the badger giving up. Some of the bees are still fighting back, but most of the guards are dead. More casually, but still carefully, the badger searches for the combs with the most honey. The damaged comb, weighed down by honey and larvae, sinks to the floor of the log. Many of the closed cells contain the next generation of bees. The badger has worked hard for its reward. The rich honey and larvae will sustain it for days to come. It will be the job of the worker bees to repair the damage to the cones, if the badger leaves any at all. Throughout the night, the badger returns for more and more, and she appears to devour every mouthful with equal relish. The bees, too, are filling their abdomens with honey in a desperate attempt to save some of the precious food supplies. Some of the workers tend any larvae which are still living, but they will never hatch out and be part of this hive. For the badger has come back again for the last remaining comb. The bees check and recheck any remaining cells for honey, while the badger can only lick up the little which remains in the last comb. There's nothing left to fight for. A few broken bits of comb a testimony to the devastation of the raid. At dawn, there is no sign of life, except for a couple of birds. But these are special birds, which feed on bees, their larvae, and even beeswax. They are honey guides, and are known for leading people to beehives. Supposedly, badgers follow them too. But here, the birds have merely come to collect the badger's leftovers. With the warmth of the sun, the remaining bees are revitalized. Astonishingly, the honey guide is not attacked, 
but is allowed to take away pieces of comb containing valuable honey and young bees. If the queen bee has survived, there's a chance they will rebuild the colony. If not, they'll all die. In the vast landscape of Tsavo, pale chanting goshawks usually mean badgers are near. The birds often know where the badgers have gone to sleep. They'll wait for them to emerge and then follow. Honey badgers flush out a huge number of small animals while they root under logs and dig in the ground. The goshawk knows this only too well. These birds follow badgers to snatch fleeing prey. While a badger is digging at one end of a tunnel, its intended victims often escape from other exits which is where the goshawks are waiting to strike. Even if a mouse has initially eluded both badger and goshawk, it is still in grave danger. With its ability to follow the faintest scent trail, the badger can easily track it down. There is no escape for a mouse with a badger on its tail and a goshawk up above. Working its way up slowly, the badger can smell or hear a mouse as it climbs upwards inside the tree. At the top of the tree, there is nowhere else for the mouse to go. If it had stayed inside the tree, it just might have been safe. Dropped it. A goshawk is always ready for any opportunity. The badger runs in a circle, searching like a bloodhound for the scent of the mouse. but that scent trail runs out. There are other mice in the tree, and the badger can smell them. Once again, the badger moves in a circle narrowing down the area where the mouse could be hiding. It can smell a mouse from 10 feet away, and it's determined to find this one. The badger is incredibly strong and may be able to rip open its hiding place. The dead tree weighs about 70 pounds. The goshawk flew a long way to find the badger. The badger is getting more and more annoyed, but so far the mouse is sticking tight, deep inside the hollow log. Throughout its six weeks of life, the baby goshawk has been fed many times courtesy of the badger. But while confined to the nest, it has no idea of this very special relationship. This association between goshawk and badger seems one-sided in favor of the bird. It's even more one-sided for the mouse. But still, the badger has not been able to break open the log.
Goshawks are the only birds of prey who can use badgers to hunt. No one knows if this amazing skill is instinctive or learned and passed down from one generation to the next. When the goshawk returns, the badger is in no mood to tolerate any thieving bird. The badger throws what looks like a temper tantrum. The goshawk will get nothing more from the badger now, but it has successfully fed its chick. For all its strength and tenacity, the badger has not been able to break into the log and get the mouse. Four hours of effort has been wasted. In time, the goshawk chick flies from the nest to accompany its parents on their forays into badger country. Badgers vary from this white two-tone phase to black all over. The goshawk's chick watches what its parents are doing, but with no apparent interest. Then, from its high vantage point, the chick sees a third badger some distance away. The unchallenged presence of this strange badger in the other's territory is intriguing. The chick can see nothing to eat here, yet it persists in following the badger. Perhaps it instinctively knows that honey badgers have developed special ways to find a food source denied to other animals. Five months ago, deep underground, a dung beetle dug a large chamber, filled it with dung, and then molded it into balls. She laid an egg in each ball, and in time they turned into larvae. Then they pupated, each fully formed beetle lying silent in its flexible skin. It has been suggested the badger's snorts work like an echo sounder, and that it can detect the return signals from the beetle's chambers. But how can it distinguish these from all other cavities? Probably the badger's incredible sense of smell is the answer. Even though the ground is hard, there must be faint smells filtering up to the surface. The actions of this badger opening the dung ball perhaps explain the young badger's fascination with the elephant bone. This activity will not benefit the goshawk because there is only one pupa in each ball, and there's no way the badger will leave it unguarded until he has finished it off. No other animal can reap such rewards from this source of food. Although the pupae are not large, they are highly nutritious, and well worth the effort of digging them up. 
The young goshawk knows he'll get nothing from the badger for now, but the seed of interest has been planted in his mind. The badger always leaves her mark in the empty hole. When heavy rain falls, the dry land floods for a few hours. The water creates a new set of rules for animals not used to dealing with such conditions. The versatile badger quickly resorts to searching for drenched and drowning prey, employing movements and tactics like an amphibious animal. Her nose tells her there is something inside the log. Inevitably, she finds and hauls out an unfortunate wingless cricket. Not many animals eat these crickets. They taste horrible. She appears to be washing it, but in the process, loses it. It seems she is going to have to leave without finding the cricket. But that's not like a badger. A young badger may find out that mice live in colonies from hunting with its parents. The goshawk chick, it seems, finds this out by watching the badger. This termite mound has fresh badger tracks around it, and there is a spotted eagle owl waiting for something to happen. But then owls always appear to be waiting. Or could it be that owls take the place of goshawks after dark, hoping to benefit from the badger's nighttime hunting? The young female seems on edge. She can obviously smell something. It's an enormous male. The clicking sounds come from the female. The male's back is very dark because he's been digging in damp soil. It would appear the female is trying to entice him into the mound with these extraordinary noises. Honey badgers are extremely cautious of anything new and take time to make up their minds. The female seems tired of being ignored and wants to take the relationship further.
The male is marking furiously. Perhaps he's a nomad and is now laying claim to the territory. Suddenly, he rushes to the mound. Built like a tank, he weighs about 25 pounds, almost double the female's weight. He marks the mound. The badger is king of this hill, for now. Then later that night he disappeared, leaving no clue whether he will return. Leopards and badgers share the same territory. It's inevitable that at some point they will meet. The young badger, only 10 inches tall, cannot see the leopard, but can smell him. The leopard isn't really interested in the badger. Once it knows the nature of its enemy, the badger's inherent fearlessness allows it to make a dignified retreat. The goshawk chick is learning fast about badgers. Now it must put what it has seen into action. It's amazing that the young goshawk sees in the actions of the badger an opportunity to improve its own chances of survival. Finally, after weeks of watching, the goshawk has found out how to exploit the badger, and in turn will show its chicks how they too can do the same. So little is known about badger behavior that it's hard to be sure about the extent of their relationships. Air vents in a termite mound can be an ideal place for badgers to live. It's possible that they pair off before reaching maturity and then stay together for life. This male is about four years old, and the female would be about the same. The pair checks the mound carefully, with the idea of moving in for a while.
Although the male is much larger than the female, he retreats and appears tolerant of her irritability. The genet cat lived here before the badgers moved in, and it's going to be some time before it can move back. The badgers begin digging out the termite mound to suit their large bodies. Some distance away from the termite mound, another drama is unfolding. In the tree where he has dragged his kill, a leopard likes to feed in the cool of the night, secure from all other predators. The leopard moves off to rest believing his dinner is out of the reach of scavengers. Just out of sight, the leopard is unaware of events in his tree. A badger is trying to use its enormous strength to pull off a piece from the carcass of the impala. The leopard returns to guard the carcass. A slender mongoose will try for the pickings too, if he gets a chance. After eating so much meat, the leopard needs to drink. The mongoose thinks the coast is clear, but so do a growing number of badgers. Thank you. 
It'll take the leopard ten minutes to quench his thirst. A lot can happen in that time. There are now eight male badgers feeding off the leopard's meal. The stage is set for a showdown. For a moment, the leopard's attack unleashed the blind fury which gives the badger its reputation. But just as quickly, the mood changes back to indifference. A hyena, attracted by the noise, wisely keeps its distance from the two formidable predators. At the termite mound, the spotted eagle owl is back, but the presence of a white-tailed mongoose seems to indicate the badgers have left. The genet is back too, although it is still wary of the lower entrance to the mound. It's the badgers. They haven't left. Oblivious to the outside world, they are mating deep inside the mound. The female badger will be in heat for three days and for most of that time, the badgers will stay underground. The leopard is still chewing on the impala, but finding it tough going as the skin dries out and the bones become hard and brittle. The badgers below, always keeping the pressure on the leopard. In addition, the leopard is now being plagued by biting flies. To get away from the flies, or maybe the badgers, or both, the leopard heads for the thick bush, an open invitation to the badgers. At last, the badgers won the carcass, but this one is in for a nasty surprise. The badger is defenseless. While its daring got it into this situation in the first place, its audacity may save it from being killed.
With his escape route blocked, the badger doesn't panic, but resorts to a clever alternative. Even so, he probably only got away because the leopard had eaten his fill. Back at the termite mound, all is much quieter now. The genet cat is still hoping to get its regular sleeping place back sometime. The male badger is ready to leave the mound. The three days and nights of courtship are over, and it's time to go in search of food. The female follows the male into the shadows. After 65 days in some distant hiding place, a single cub will be born, hairless and blind. Its eyes will open after 33 days, but it will only see well at three months, when for the first time, it will leave the burrow to follow its parents. The leopard is still hanging on. There is still enough meat on the dry carcass for a hungry badger, but the leopard, after such an extended meal, has no real appetite for it. The 120-pound leopard is able to kill an animal its own size and pull it into a tree, but that's about all. The badger is far more versatile. With its incredible energy and specialized hunting skills, the badger can exploit far more sources of food than most. In a world where survival is the ultimate test, the honey badger's fearless nature makes it one of the most successful predators in Africa. A formidable creature with a definite vicious streak, they are still capable of surprising gentleness. By any measure, the honey badger is no mean killer. <laughs>